the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody. God bless you. I'm glad you're back. I've been uh, continuing to study on the anatomy of faith because, you know, the Bible said that the just should live by faith. And I, I want to, I think we want to get to that point of understanding the roots of, of our faith and then and, and, and putting into the practice that it needs to be in order to be successful. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to come to pray and worship your holy name. Father, I pray that you continue to lead us and guide us in all truth. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. You know, and, and, and as we stated, we want to talk about making it plain. Try to get into the word of God. Keep it simple, you know? To make it plain is to, is to just get into the root of understanding God's word so it can be, we can be successful in our life. And the vision of the ministry is always to focus on uh, to make sure that we apply the Word of God in a practical and effective manner. That's the key. That's what uh, this series about making it plain is all about, is being able to <laughs> keep it, in, it, I guess what you call the common sense, the common sense of thinking and not try to be into the, I, I, I just don't like playing religious and playing church and trying to, to fool people and give a false image of yourself. Be who you are. And, and if that's not good enough for God, then let him mold you and shape you. Because remember, every last one of us are created uniquely by God. We, 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 we are who we are based on what we've been trained, molded, our character, our personality, and all the things have a purpose. And we just kind of continue to focus on that. Amen? So the anatomy of faith, we talked about the fact is in, in our Hebrew, now faith is the substance of things, so forth. The evidence of things not seen. We talked about in Mark 11, 24, about the, the desires is, is the blueprint. Even hope is a blue, <laughs> excuse me, a blueprint of what we have an expectation of good for. So when the Bible said to just live by faith, God is trying to say for all of us to have a positive outlook of what we expect to have in our life. It's, it's common sense, right? You don't want to have an expectation. Oh, it's going to be a bad day. Oh, things happen to me like that all the time. Oh, I can never get ahead because, you know, everything is against me. You know, even I remember when the, the uh, lecture, you know, one candidate said and says rigged. Right. And said it before the actual election. And you keep saying that. And it only applies if you lose. So it's kind of like one of those covering. If I lose, because it's rigged. So if I win, it's not rigged. But if I lose, it's rigged. And now I'm going to blame the fact is I lost because it was a rigged system. Think about it. But, but that's not just any, that's just not just that particular candidate. What do we do in life? A lot of cases do we downplay situations so that it let us be able to deal with the outcome if it goes the wrong way. Amen? Think about it, right? So one of the things is, like I said, we want to get to the, when we talk about desires, you know, we I put the slide up there and talk about the, the desires. And, and the key to what I'm trying to say is we have to get to the root of our desires. We have to get the root to our, our, our blueprint. We got to get the root to our expectations. And, and anytime expectation is something that's opposite of what we want, we have to be able to reanalyze those things and, and get them to line up to expectations of good. I'm saying, as you walk this walk, what are you saving? I say, if you walk light, you want to have your life focus on expectations of winning. Focus on expectations of good. Not focus on expectation of bad. Because, uh, you know, it's almost like you, you, you bring in the bad to pass if you allow that to keep being manifest and coming out of your mouth. So you want to get into uh, the, the root of the desires. And what we're trying to say is, if the roots line up with the will of God, 
then those are the roots you want to keep cultivating and, and, and working on. If the roots of your desires equals the forbidden things of God, and I know those of you who do say, well, I, I, I'm not yielding to the things of God. Well, let's just deal with the roots that of uh, desires, expectations that will offend somebody else. Some people say, well, I don't care about offending somebody. Well, then that, that, that's the whole issue, isn't it? You can go through life being selfish or being because somebody was selfish to you. But that's, that's, that's not always going to be a pleasant thing because you're always in a combative mode towards somebody else. So therefore, your expectation is really, it's not focused on something good, it's focused on something that's going to be disruptive toward somebody, to the people around you. So let's focus on whether you save or not is the fact is that you want to have, get to the root of your desires and anything that's forbidden in society, forbidden by God, then we want to sit there and try to get those things. What's, what's, what's causing those roots to come in? And, 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 and start eliminating the thing that feeds to the negative outcomes, right? And what we want to have is trusting faith, trusting faith in God. You know, the Bible said, trust in the Lord all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. You want to have a personal relationship, not with man, in the sense of you have a trust and faith in man, because if you do have trust and faith in man, then you're on a weak foundation. If you have trust and faith in yourself, you build a weak foundation too. So you want to have a trust and faith in God. I think a lot of cases people have been even turned off of Christianity because they're they're seeing they're watching people and what people do and what people say, and then we get turned off because the people who's trying to tell you something are also guilty of the same thing themselves or something else. It doesn't matter, right? The fact is that a number of us as people are perfect. We, we all have different issues and different things that that, uh, that we fall short of. And so therefore we wanna have trust and faith in God instead of having the, trying to do it alone. Because I think if you try to operate in faith alone, sometimes it can be dangerous, especially if the desires or the blueprints is something that's destructive. And you know what's destructive. We all know what. Long as if it's gonna hurt somebody else, they're gonna put somebody else down, then it's destructive. You got people with different political parties. If they're doing something to put down the other party, they're doing something to defeat the other party, then then that that's 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 that's, that's a combative uh, posture. And and even if you're thinking, and that's what happens when you think negative ways if everything somebody else did is wrong you can't see them doing right you're always looking for the bad and the negative that's what you're going to that's what you're going to get and then when it comes your turn same thing will happen to you so we want to be able to get out of that cycle of constantly sitting there and focus on on expectations of the negative focus if you want to focus on being successful you want to be focused on being either a great president a great politician a great employee a great businessman you want to focus on doing those things that make you successful, not focus on the things that make somebody else look weak so that you can look good. Because all it's going to do right there, you plant negative, you're going to get negative. So we want to be able to focus on uh, our life with a trusting faith and our desires that come from, far as I'm concerned, you want, to, you want your desires to come from that which is acceptable in the eyes of God, that's what is acceptable in the eyes of the people that you have relationships or interacting with. You want to have something, I guarantee you, if you're always doing something that's selfish, then eventually that's what's going to be happening to you. Somebody's, you being selfish, somebody be selfish, everybody being selfish, then everybody's going to continue to try to hurt somebody else to get to their goal. So we got to sit there and, and get our desires to come line up with the will of God. That's why you want to study the word of God, not by legalism. <laughs> it's just the fact is what things line up that's going to be successful. Uh, we want to be able to uh, speak the things that's coming out of our mouth that our expectations are good, of, of winning. That's the, that's the goal, man. You want to be able to be winning. You want to sit there and, and, and allow yourself to be directed toward the positive things of life, not focus on the right things, right?
The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by the expectations of something good. Come on, man. I rather wake up with expectations of something good instead of working on something that lines up with failure and defeat uh, and hate and discontent. You know, so we want to live by faith. And that's what faith is. And I like the fact that Hebrews 11, 1 is that now what faith is, what? The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. What's not seen? Well, the things that's going on in your mind. I said one time before, your mind is an arena of faith. And the world, if people, things, the spiritual realm, there's some things out there that want you to have a defeat in the mind. Because, they can, you know, just like in sports or anything else, if I see failure, then I'm gonna, that's what's gonna happen, amen? So now look at this. So when I get to Hebrews 11, one, one of the things I wanna throw out to you is start off and to kind of get it, to roll into Hebrews 11, one, we really should go into Hebrews 10 and start off around about, I think, a, uh, let's say right here, I think verse 30. Hebrews 10, verse 30, we're going to move and, 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 and dissect and, and analyze the scriptures leading to Hebrews 11, 1, probably to 11, 4, okay? So in, in Hebrews uh, 10, 30, for we know him that has said, vengeance belongs unto me. I will recompense, says the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. I, I, that one of the things is that as we do expectations of good and we deal with the things that try to put us down, just think about this. Vengeance is the Lord. Turn it over to God instead of sitting there trying to work it out yourself. A lot of cases you don't have, you're not equipped to deal with it. But turn it over to the Lord instead of trying to turn it over into the flesh. Amen? So one of the things is it says after that in verse 31, it says, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So that's why we said, let vengeance be with the Lord instead of us. Turn over to the Lord. <laughs> I guarantee you, God knows how to deal with the situation better than you and I, because when we try to do it, we also have consequences that goes along with our actions. If those actions doesn't line up by the laws of the land or in the eyes of God, think about it. It says in 32, but call to remembrance the former things in which after ye were illuminated, meaning you got that understanding of the gospel and, and the things of God, you endured a great fight of affliction. In a lot of cases, when you do turn your life over to Christ, when you do turn your life over as a Christian, then you, you start finding there's affliction that comes in after you, trying to divert you back to where you came from. People who decided to stay and do what they normally like to do in a, in a world of way, start putting you down, start making you looking bad and trying to go after you and, and persecute you. Uh, but you you take that great fight of affliction knowing that your rewards are already in heaven. He said, partly, verse 33, partly when we were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and affliction, and partly while ye became companions of them that were so used. For you have compassion of me and my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourself that you have in heaven a better and enduring substance. Uh, we, we, we go through life, we go through the challenges of life because we know that we have greater substance, we have rewards in heaven. And you've got to look at that. I mean, it's not to say you, you was to enjoy affliction and everything else, but the fact is if people come after you because of Christ's sake, you know that you you you, you got greater rewards in heaven. Uh, and you, you just got to accept that and say, hey, man, you coming after me because of my stand in Christ? Hey, man, I must be doing something good, huh? Must be doing something good. He said, verse 35, cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Think about that. See, I'm saying it, don't cast your confidence away. You you made a positive decision, a quality decision. Don't don't cast your confidence away. You have a reward. Your rewards now as well in heaven. For you have need of patience 
all of us do, right? Uh, that after you have done the will of God, now see, that's the key. After you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise of the things of God by doing the will of God, by being obedient to him. Not being to the people, not beating to yourself, but obedient to him. For yet a little while, and he that shall call, the he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith or the expectations of something good. But if any man draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. When you draw back, that means you start to take your expectations or your trust and faith in other things. And God said, I have no pleasure in that. I need you to have faith in me, trust in me, that I'll get you through. Amen. I'll give you that abundant life you want. He says, in verse 9, but we are not of them who draw back. We press forward unto petition. But to them that believe to the saving of the soul is what we do. And then we're going to uh, 11. Now, based on what we just read, Hebrews 11, 1, now, not the sweet by and by. <laughs> now. Now, faith, the expectation of something good, is the substance of things hoped for, blueprint, hoping, right? The evidence of things not seen by other people or by your physical eyes, but in your mind. Because the, the substance, the, the, the war, the, the transition goes in from starts in the mind. A thought, an idea, then is manifested in this reality, but it starts here in your mind. How do you see yourself? Where do you see you're going to be? Where you want to be in a That's where it's going to in the mind, saints. I'm just saying it's common sense. And that's why we want to make it plain, right? He said, for by the elders attain a good report. They are obtain a good report by operating by faith. He said, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And, and, and that's critical because the word of God is Jesus Christ because the word was made flesh. Jesus, the word, was in the beginning with God because everything God spoke is Christ that we're talking about. He is the word of God, the living word of God. And see, when God says something, it comes to pass because God said it. All right? And I don't know, you don't want to believe in God? Fine, but I'm going to tell you what. Everything you say does not come to pass. Everything that I say does not come to pass. Everything that anybody else out there, whether they're a billionaire, trainer, or whatever, what they say does not always come to pass. But when God says it, it comes to pass. And we see right here that the worlds were framed by the word of God. That's why we want to have the, the word of God in our life. That's why we want to know his will. His words, his will, because that's where the power is at, in the will of God. He said, so the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. It's made from, like I said, it's in the spiritual realm. It's also in your mind as to what you see in the spirit. I'm telling you, this is common sense, even for you. That idea, you know, a house is not built straight off the bat, it's been conceptualized. It's, it's, been, it's, been, it's been studied, analyzed. It was formulated in the mind and the idea and the thoughts of a person before it became reality. And that's even the same thing for us. It's the same thing with God. It starts from here and then it's spoken into existence. Amen? And, and in verse 4, so for by, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he attained witness that he was righteous. That the, that's the account about Cain, Abel, because of he doing the right thing. God testified of his gift, and by it, he being dead just spoke, or speaketh, because he attained a good report. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. It was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony. What he did, he pleased God. 
I, I, I added on to always go to verse six because I like that because uh, but without faith, without the expectations of the good, without the blueprint that God can work with, without the blueprint that you can work with, without the blueprint that other people can work with for you or for you, without faith, without the expectation of good, it is impossible to please him because he's not in the desire and the goal of sitting there bringing negative to pass. He's in the goal of bringing expectations of good to pass. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, trusting in him, believing that he exists, huh? And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. See, the common sense and the common thing of expectation is you want to seek God. You want to seek him. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You want to have trust and faith in God, not trust and faith in people. Some people try to do the best they can, but it's not always going to come to pass. But when we put our trust in God, then we can believe in him, trusting in him. I guarantee you, you try to trust in people. People have conditions, conditional faith, conditional love, and everything else. Even you have a certain a degree of conditional uh, love or conditional faith. God is saying, trust in him and put your faith in him. That not in your faith is trust in faith. The anatomy of faith is to have the blueprint in your mind. Trust in God to bring it to pass. And he'll use you and anything else to bring it to pass. Amen. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this study. I think I was trying to keep it, make it plain, keep it plain of understanding what faith is all about. Amen. All right. I'll check you later and God bless you. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.